In this video, we're gonna do some crown molding and we're gonna do it right now. I have installed all of my cabinets in my kitchen and the only thing missing, well, besides door handles, a floor, a countertop and everything else is the crown molding. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. This video might help you out if you don't have crown molding on your cabinets right now. When I put my cabinets up, I anticipated that I was gonna do crown molding. So I already put these blocks in, but that's something you could do afterwards. If you have room for crown and you're looking to do it, you can put in just these nailers is what I call them with a couple screws, hidden screws underneath here, just so you have something to nail the crown to. And in other cases, your cabinets might not be like mine. Mine have a very small reveal up here where there's really nothing to nail to, but you might have enough where you don't even have to do the blocking. I also want my crown to go all the way to the ceiling so it matches up with the crown in the rest of the house. Again, this might not be your situation or you might not even be doing crown. You might just wanna watch this video. Whatever the case, I'm gonna show you how I do mine. So I'm gonna start over in this corner, work my way around, and then around here, I'm gonna dive it into the wall. And then I think I'm gonna leave this piece out for now until I figure out what to do here. I can always add a piece afterwards with two copes, and then I'll continue it right here. Come around into the refrigerator panel. I'm gonna do some some tricky stuff over here, wrap it around here, and then zoom it right down the hallway. Right here, I left the refrigerator panel a quarter inch away from this wall because that's what I want that bottom reveal to be. So this crown will actually be totally even with this wall. And then I can wrap it around this hallway, remodeling the hallway at the same time, and then match it up to this piece of crown here. Done. Easy peasy. So here's the plan. My crown molding is gonna go up to the ceiling. But as you can see, I have nothing to nail to here, or I could set it back like this. But what I'm gonna do, I have a couple options. Take pieces that are the same color as the cabinets. They're actually cabinet fillers. And do this, where this is nice and even. Or what I'm gonna do, put a filler piece in here and then this piece in here, again, this will match everything and put my crown just like this. That will give it a little added detail right here. So that's my plan. This reveal right here from down here to the bottom of the crown is gonna change as we go around the room because the ceiling is not perfect and that's okay. Um, I just didn't want a gap up here. That's totally fine if you're doing that. But like I said, I wanted to match the rest of the house, have it even with the ceiling. So this is what I'm gonna do. Now on the sides of these cabinets, I'm gonna do the same thing. The only difference is this is not as thick as the face frame. So when I put my nailer up here, that's all I need. I don't need to add the piece of quarter inch because when I put this here, this is gonna be the exact same reveal as the one in the front when I put these pieces on here. First step is to rip down some quarter inch filler pieces and I'm gonna use whatever I have laying around, just some scrap wood. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Now I'm just taking measurements, really rough measurements. Just gonna leave some space here so I don't have any issues. And measurements like 11 inches. And then I can cut all those filler pieces. Now I'm gonna use a staple gun to attach these. And I'm not gonna do any 
angles like a 22.5 over here. I'm just going to staple them in there. I'm also going to just make sure that the next piece will go in without interference. Just want to make it tight. And I wrote all the measurements down in order so I knew where these were going. Do the same thing on this side. Those pieces are in all the way around. I'm just gonna wait on this one right here because I'm doing something a little different over there. So wait on that. Now let's talk about the cabinet filler. As you can see on three sides, they are finished and they match the cabinet color. These are three inches, which I'm actually gonna rip these in half because I only need on one side about a quarter inch reveal and then on the other side it goes to about five eighths or so. So I can rip these right in half and either send the rest back to the company or use them for something else in the future. Here is where we need to get more selective with our cuts. So we want to make this nice. We want to do a 45 degree angle. So I cut a scrap piece of filler at 45 degrees, two of them, so that when they match up here, you can tell that you're doing it correctly. So basically you get this to a perfect point and that will tell you exactly where you want to cut this piece. And then when you cut this piece, which by the way, it's better to cut longer than shorter, you can use this piece to match up this joint right here, this 45, and then you can nail this when you know that that's good. And you're gonna do the same thing all the way around. But we're gonna start with this piece. So I'll take a measurement from the wall to the short point of the 45, which is this one right here, and cut that piece and keep these around so you can match it up here, make sure they're good. I'll do the 45 first. You gotta make sure that this is gonna be on the bottom after you make that cut. So I'm gonna hold it just like this. Turn my saw to a 45, make that cut, go nice and slow. I have a nice finish blade on here. Should make a nice cut. And it doesn't really matter if you do the 45 first or the straight cut. You just want to make sure when you measure this, you're measuring at the right point. So I'm going to hold this over an inch so I can get an accurate measurement, holding it right to the short point and then marking my piece right here. my first piece. Let's see how we did with our first piece. And then we take our scrap piece, match it up, and actually, I think we did pretty good. That looks perfect. So I know that my 45 is good right there. And I also noticed that I must have put my nailer piece in a little crooked because when I put this piece in, I want to nail the top, not the bottom, because I don't want the nails to show. So if you look at the wall, this is square and this is not, and that makes a gap open at the top. So I'm just gonna sneak a little shim at the top here, and then I can nail the top, match that up, and we'll be good to go. I'm gonna nail this right here, up high. And that actually pulled in, so this side is a little crooked too. So let's try this again. So I know that I need to put a shim in there. Shim right here, shim over here. And this won't matter as much on pieces where you can't 
see that they go up against the wall or a 45. There we go. Just check this again. Perfect. So now we only put the crown up there. It'll cover those nails. So we know that that is a 45 and I know that that is a 22.5. That's just how the corner cabinets work out. So I cut two pieces inside corner 22.5 just to make sure that we're going to be good here. So we put our two pieces 22.5 inside corner and we match them up and make sure that it is a 22.5 and that we're going to be good and you got to maneuver it around but you want to line this seam up with the seam where the cabinets meet so it's going to look something like that and the way the camera angle is that is not in line but it is in real life so I'm gonna hold this right where it's good and there's no back here to mark but I'm gonna make a little mark right at the end of that 22.5 and I can measure that to either the short point or the long point of the other 45 and make those cuts. Same thing we just did on that last piece. I'm gonna hold my tape to the short point of the 45 and measure to the long point of the 22.5. I'm gonna cut my inside corner first, 22.5, and I'll show you why I'm doing this one first. Now I have my long point, and now I want to measure to the short point of the 45. So if I do it this way, I can hook on just like this, and that'll make it much easier. Put my piece up here. Make sure my 45 is going to be good is right there make sure my 22.5 is good which it is perfect and now I can nail it but first I want to glue this 45 so now that I know this is good I'm gonna put a little glue right on that 45 just a little bit and you can glue all this if you wanted to but I don't think it's necessary. This in. And we know the other side's good, so we just want to make sure that this 45 is perfect. And I am going to nail with finished nails going this way up high and hope that it doesn't shoot out the other side. Now I can nail this piece off, make sure it's nice and tight down to the cabinets, and nail high. And I can actually tuck my hand up here and feel where the fillers are, so I know I'm getting into something solid. Just don't keep your hand there when you're shooting. Pro tip. Looking good. Nail holes will be covered. Tight to the cabinets. And then the rest is pretty much the same. I'm gonna do measure long point to long point over here. Just keep those blocks around and keep making sure the seams are good before you nail them. And then we're gonna dive this into the wall. Continue over here the same way we just did on the other side. And then end it right there. And then we'll get into this. Okay, looking good all the way around. All my pieces in here. And now it's time to deal with the refrigerator panel and cabinet. So I've taken the doors off and 
What I'm gonna do is rip a piece quarter inch. This is quarter inch. And I'm gonna go around just like that, put a piece in normal, bump this out. But I'm not going to just butt the quarter inch piece to this. I am actually gonna cut this flush with the top of the cabinet. So right at the top of this cabinet, I want to cut this. I think it's just going to look more uniform. I could just butt it here and butt it here, but then you're going to have this. I think it's going to look way better if I just cut this off and do a 45 and wrap it right around. So I'm going to do that same thing on both sides. There shouldn't be a screw. This is two pieces. There shouldn't be a screw uh, behind here. It's more like down here. There is some glue, but I should be able to, to break that right off of there. So. All right, so I got a piece of scrap wood with some clamps. I have it nice and even against the top of the cabinet. And I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna use my handy dandy tool and a nice flat blade so that it sits nice and flush and hopefully cuts that nice and straight. We'll see. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, right? Here we go. Can't get in there with this. Come on. I guess I could this way, but then it's gonna stop. Hmm, how would you do this? I have changed the blade. I'm just gonna go nice and slow. Be really careful. good over there. We're not going to know right here until I cut the other side. Take this down. Right now, looks like it's good. I think this side might be glued up a little better than the other. Let's see if I can just give it a little tap. Now what I've done is I've ripped down what I'm going to use here, quarter inch. That is going to go from here, the bottom of this piece, like this. This is leveled, by the way, when I put the cabinet in. I made sure that this was the same as these cabinets right here. So it's going to go from here over to here, just like that. And then I'm going to put my filler piece in right here and then do my 45 like I did everywhere else. Match these up just like that. And then my crown will go around like this. Sweet. I think it worked out. So then over here, this will be the same thing. Put my filler piece in, put this piece in. And then that I will level across this way and it'll be even with this wall now. And then I can run the crown right down the hallway. There we go. I think that looks great. I'm glad I cut those. I think it looks way better than if I just had them butted to it. This side looks good. And over here, instead of leveling this piece, I went off of the ceiling because for whatever reason, there is a big change. So I just went even with the ceiling so you won't be able to see the difference. Nice. Now we're ready for crown. So the first thing I wanted to do with this crown is I painted it. I got paint from this cabinet company that matches the cabinets. And since I didn't get the crown from them, I wanted to match the crown that I already have. So I painted this before I even put it up. Trust me, it's 
way easier doing that than painting it once it's up. So here's my crown that's already painted and I want to use that only for the pieces that are actually going in there. Whenever you're doing crown, it's a good idea to get extra because you're going to do some of these pieces to match up all the joints. And there's three different types of joints here that I'm going to do. An outside 45, a 22.5, and a cope. And I'm going to show you all three of those right now. Cutting the crown is where people get tripped up because you think either you put it down like this or you hold it like this at an angle. But the actual way, because this is the bottom of the crown, the actual way to cut it is upside down. So if you picture this is your ceiling and this is your wall and you want to hold this where this right here, top of the crown and your ceiling is at a 90 degree angle. Something a little like that. And that's how you want to make all of your cuts, except for a straight cut. You can cut it just like that. So I have some scrap crown that I'm going to cut all of my pieces that are going to be used to match up all of the different angles and joints. So, like I said, this is the ceiling. This is the top of the crown. We're going to do a 45 degree angle to start. So turn this to 45 degrees. Hold your crown like this. Look down the side of it to help you out and cut it. There's one. You can cut this off right about here. Forty five the other way. And now you have your outside. 45 degree angle right here. And these pieces I'm gonna use just like I did with the trim that goes underneath it. I put my first piece on, make sure this is good, and I can take this away and nail this. And then I can do my next piece. Now 22.5, again, upside down. This is your ceiling. So for an inside corner, you would go the opposite way we just did with the outside corner. Hold it just like this and cut. There's one. And go the other way. And there's the other. So now this is for the inside corner. That's how I do it. There, you may know of a different way. Maybe some people cope this piece into here, but this is how I do it. Just like that. Now let me show you what I mean by a cope. For a cope, you hold it the same way, but instead of doing a 45 this way, you do a 45 this way. The opposite side. I don't think I actually need two of them. I think I only need one, but I'll show you anyways. Now you need to cut this out, this whole profile right here. Sometimes if you take a pencil and just draw along here, let you see a little better where that profile is. And then you take a coping saw. That's what it's made for. And hold it at an angle like this and just cut all of this material out following this profile the whole way. Now you 
got something that looks a little something like this. And you can do that same thing here if you have a cope on that side. Let me show you what you do with this. So as an example, I'm gonna be starting here. We'll say that this is my first piece. It actually needs to be trimmed a little bit, but this cope will tell you where that needs to be. This one is a little different where I'm gonna have to play with, depending on where this was put before, it might not be perfect and this cope doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a guide to tell you where this needs to go. So that actually looks pretty decent. So I know that I can nail this one if it's good here. Like I said, I do have to trim it. Now that I have all my pieces cut, I can use these the same way I did with the filler strip. And it's gonna take a lot of maneuvering when you put it up there. If it's not perfect the first time, you just might have to adjust the crown, move it this way. You might have to make another cut with it slightly adjusted. Sometimes the angle isn't perfect and doesn't work for your situation. I know it's not gonna be for mine, but it just takes a lot of patience. Trust me, crown is not easy. And I have a super detailed video on crown molding when I did the living room and the old cabinets. I'll leave a link in the description over to that. But like I said, just a lot of patience. Keep trying, maneuver stuff around, make different cuts, get plenty of crown and make it happen. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. Let's use this area as an example of what I'm doing here. Measure this. I know this is gonna be a straight cut and then I'm gonna do my cope into that. So I measure here to that same gap or seam, 48 and a 16th to the long point because the 22.5 goes like this. It's gonna be just like that. So that is actually the long point. Once I have that piece, I put it up there. And first thing I wanna do is check this cope. First, make sure it looks like it's gonna be the right length. And then put this cope up here and maneuver this around. Make sure it looks good. So I know that that cope's gonna be good. So then I go over to here on the other side, and you can see the ceiling is not perfect. That's okay. That's just how it is. It's how it's gonna be. And then you take your 22.5 over here, maneuver that around, and that actually looks great. So I'm not gonna nail this. What I'm gonna do is get this side I'm gonna work around this way. I'm gonna get this cope so that it's good. Once it's good, I'm taking my 18 gauge pin nailer. I'm just putting a couple nails over here. We can fill all this stuff in afterwards. And if you're able to, get some nails up here if you know where the strapping is. So I leave this loose. So that way, when I cut my next piece, I can put it in here, get it to where it needs to be, and I'll know that this piece and this piece are good. And that looks perfect. So I hold it just like that. Try not to move it. Get some nails in it. I can push this up and get a nail in here to close that gap and put it where it needs to be. Nailed it. Ha ha ha. Just put one more over here. 
And then you take your next piece. This should be where it needs to be now. Before I put this piece in, I want to glue this right here. Glue all my joints, all my 45s and my 22.5s. And again, I'm not going to nail this side just yet. I want to cut this piece and that piece and make sure this one is good before I nail it. So what I'm going to do is cut a 22.5 to go here and leave it long and then I'll mark right here and cut that 45. And do the same thing here. Square cut, leave it long, mark it, and then I'll cut those at the same time, put it in, see how it looks. I'll match up this 22.5, mark this right at the end, I'll mark the orientation, 45, you can put a coat piece in the corner to make sure that's good. I am pretty sure I'm putting a piece in there after I do the tile, because I think I'm going to do tile up the wall. But we'll see. I can do all that after because i got to put a piece of this in to bump that out. But that's afterwards. Now I check my pieces. Get this back to where it needed to be. And this is where it gets tricky because that 45 is good, but the 22.5 is not good. Especially with a short piece, it can be difficult to make both of the seams look good because of the ceiling and all the other factors. So you kind of got to pick your poison. One good thing is if you cut it long, you can change this angle a little bit, tip it on the saw to uh, make this a different angle to make those match up better if you cut it long or you have to do a new piece. I think I can get this one to work. It just takes a lot of patience, a lot of maneuvering to get it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue and nail this 45 together first and hope that it stays together while I maneuver this around. I'll wipe off this glue. It's going to be hard to get this stuff perfect. It'll be easier if you don't have a ceiling to go to. A lot of people will just um, leave a gap. And if that's the case, you cut them at a perfect 45, uh, like I showed you on the saw, and then just run it along. It's much easier than if you're attaching to a ceiling. And as a side note, this is why I didn't cut my recessed lights, because I think I'm too close to this crown. Yeah, that's only nine inches to the center. So I'm going to have to move those out. That's why I didn't cut them, because I figured I'd be too close. I'm going to keep on going around, around the refrigerator panels, and then I'll go down the hallway, around here, and connect back to the rest of the crown. So I've got all my seams as tight as I could and I can use this fill stick that came with the cabinets to fill the nail holes and some of the cracks. And if there's some touch-ups, I have this little marker. And then I can use caulking to caulk the crown to the ceiling and use caulking and paint in the hallway and I'll be all set. Once you do all the finishing touches, fill it all in, you'll go from something like this to something like this. Nice finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you if you are going to do crown above your cabinets. My biggest tip would be to get extra crown. Don't get frustrated when you cut a piece short because you're probably gonna, unless you do it every single day, which if you're watching this video, you probably don't. 
Let me know how I did in the comments, and if you want to see more videos like this, you can click Hearish and Hearish. And stay tuned for the big time lapse of this kitchen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. When you cut crown, it cutting cutting the crown. Mm -hmm. So when you cut crown, you drop it.